question six, we have a ball dropped from a height h to a smooth inclined plane. The ball strikes at p. The plane is inclined at 30. The coefficient of restitution is a half. Show that the ball's next impact will be a distance 3h over 2 from p. So this ball is being released from rest, say. We can find its velocity because we know the acceleration is g and the distance it travels is h. So using v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, we get v squared is equal to 2gh, so the velocity is the square root of 2gh. So the spec then is going to be, if we bring our right angle down here, to have my plane as my i direction, we have a 30 degree angle, we can think of ways to do it with a 30 degree angle, which will make this 60, this one 60, this one 30. So we can use the 60 or the 30. So you, um, my eye direction is going to be adjacent to 60. So you cos 60, the eye direction, and it's positive negative. So negative u sine 60 in the j direction. And my u is the square root of 2gh. And the cos of 60 is equal to a half, so it's times 1 over 2 in the i direction, minus u and the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2 in the j direction. Sorry, my u, I need to put in my u, I have my u, the square root of 2gh, the dog is snoring, putting me off, the square root of 2gh by the sine of 60, which is root 3 over 2 in the j direction. So that's just root 2gh over 2. You can tidy this up whatever way you want. There's many different ways to write it. Minus root 2 by root 3 is root 6. So I'll just put that inside root 6gh over 2 in the j direction. So if this is our vector before, after impact, I will remain unchanged. So the square root of 2gh over 2 in the i direction, we'll have to multiply by minus e, so we're going to get plus, and e is a half, so we just put a 4 on the bottom here, so plus the square root of 6gh over 4 in the j direction. And if we get the magnitude of this, we get u, and then we have another angle going this way, which we do have some information about based on based on vy and vx. So let's get the magnitude first, the square root of both of these things we squared, so we're going to get 2gh over 4 plus 6gh over 16. That's just, that's going to be the square root of gh over 2 plus 3gh, that's a 16, 3gh over 8, and that will be 4gh over 8, plus 3gh over 8, the square root of 7g, and if the h here, gh over 8 is the magnitude, the tan of the angle, the tan of a, let's be called it a, tan of a, is equal to the square root of 6gh over 4 divided by the square root of 2gh over 2. Turning this upside down and multiplying, we're going to get the square root of 6gh over 4 times 2 over the square root of 2gh. Now we can separate them so the ghs will cancel. Imagine it's the square root of 6 I'll get rid of the 4 first, it's the square root of 6 by the square root of gh over 2 by root 2 by root gh, so we can separate them out and cancel them. So we're going to get root 6 over 2 root 2, and root 6 is root 3 by root 2, root 3 by root 2 over 2 by root 2 gives root 3 over 2, so that's what tan of a is. So let's just do a quick get sine and cos. 
there's an a root 3 over 2 would be the square root of 4 plus 3 7 square root of 7 so cos a is equal to 2 over root 7 sine a is equal to root 3 over root 7 so we should be able to get the time taken for the next bounce s of y ut plus the half at squared my u is this velocity here that we got the square root of 7 gh over 8 times t no that would be by the sine of the angle a so just don't forget about the sine of the angle so i should probably write it out first and i thought i'm just getting tired so i'm going to shorten it down 7 gh over 8 by the sine of the angle which is root 3 over root 7 root 3 over root 7 well that's root 7 we'll cancel but if we separated the 7 on top so we can come back to that in a minute and then the acceleration is negative in the j direction so minus a half the acceleration in the j direction just remind me what it was did we even write it down we didn't write it down but it's going to be minus g by the cos of 30 minus g by the cos of 30 so that's root 3 over 2 so minus root 3 over 2 times g i left out my t here times t squared so when is this equal to naught if i factor out my t i'm going to get the square root of 3 on top with gh as well so the square root of 3 gh over the square root of 8 we can put all of them inside the same square root and then minus root 3 over 4 gt so when is this whole thing equal to zero so we'd say that the square root of 3 gh over root 8 would have to be equal to the square root of 3 gt over 4 the root 3 parts will cancel so i'm going to get the square root of gh multiplied by 4 divided by g and divided by root 8 that's going to be my t so how does this simplify down if we have a g in the bottom and square root of g on the top that's the same as g to the power of a half and g to the power of minus and g to the power of minus a half so the root g will bring go down to the bottom so i'm going to have four root h on top over eight root eight is two root two and the g will end up on the bottom as a square root so that will make it a two on top if I multiply by root 2 over root 2 to get rid of the third in the bottom on top, I will get 2 root 2h. So 2 root 2h, I can both of them inside. And on the bottom, I'm going to get 2 root 2 by root 2 by the square root of g. So the time taken for the second bounce is equal to the square root of 2h over g. And now we need to find s of x at this time. So it's going to be ut. So I've got root 7gh over 8. Root 7gh. The whole thing is a square root. And that would be by, we had the sine of the angle last time. It's going to be the cos of the angle this time. And the cos of the angle we got to be 2 over root 7, 2 over root 7, and it was my plus a half at squared, so plus a half by the acceleration, which was g sine 30 or g over 2. And I have to multiply this guy by t, and this guy by t squared. So let's do that underneath. So We've got the square root of 7gh 
times 2 over the square root of 8 by the square root of 7 times t, which is root 2h on top and root g on the bottom. So we can cancel our 7s. So that's root gh. So we've got a 2. I'll separate the numbers 2 root 2 by root gh by root h. So that's by h by root g. And on the bottom we have 2 root 2, which is what root 8 is, by root g. So here this part is just going to give me h. And then I have plus g over 4 times t squared, which is going to be 2h over g squared. So that's going to give me 2h over 4, which is just h over 2. So we're going to have h. So that squared in my accent, that should cancel out with the g. So it's just going to be just plus h over 2. So I have h plus h over 2, which is 3h over 2. So that's the range. What were we asked to find? We're asked to show that the ball's impact will be a distance 3h over 2 from p. Hallelujah.